America needs teachers and you too can get an opportunity to teach in the United States. This is your step-by-step -step guide on how you can get a teaching job in the United States. Stay tuned to the end of this video where I'll share with you the qualifications and step-by-step -step guide on how you can be on your way. Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will be talking about how you can get a teaching job in the United States. We will be looking at the requirements, the visa processing, as well as cultural expectations, and so many more vital information that you will need to get on your journey to teaching in the United States. If you're joining this platform for the first time, my name is Dr. Britton, and on this channel, we share how you can get a teaching job here in the United States. There are a lot of videos on the teaching process here in the United States, and if you have not subscribed as yet, go ahead and hit that subscription button and be on the lookout for more important videos. For my returning viewers, thanks for joining, but guess what? We're going to get straight into it. So without any further ado, the first requirement that we must have to teach in the United States is a bachelor's degree. It is a requirement to have a minimum of a bachelor's degree. So what does this mean? If you have a diploma in teaching, that's not going to help. And if you have an associate in teaching, that's not going to help either. You need a bachelor's degree in education, specifically in education. Now, there are other instances where teachers, and this is specifically um, talking about international teachers, there are instances where international teachers who have a first degree that's not in education may also be eligible to get a teaching job here in the United States. But that's for a different video, so you definitely want to be on the lookout for more information. But today, for an international teacher to be eligible, one of the main requirements is to have a bachelor's degree in education. Now, your bachelor's degree should be from an accredited institution. It does not have to be from the U.S. because we all know if you're an international teacher, you may have studied in your home country. So if you're from Trinidad and Tobago, you're from Jamaica, you're from Cuba, wherever you're from, the degree you possess should be from an accredited university. That's the first thing you need to have as an international teacher. Now, since we're talking about the bachelor's degree, I'm going to add another very important aspect to your bachelor's degree. It's very important to have your bachelor's degree, but if it's not from the United States, then they want to know that that degree is equivalent to a U.S. degree. And what do I mean by this? If you are from a different country, say you're from Botswana or you're from Ghana, wherever you're from, that bachelor's degree you have in education, when you get that evaluated, it should be equivalent to a bachelor's degree in the United States. And so that's another important requirement. So requirement one, having the bachelor's degree, that's the first one, but this bachelor's degree must be equivalent to a US bachelor's degree. How are we gonna prove this? Now, in the United States, there are a lot of credentialing companies and what most states require is that you get it evaluated through a company that is approved by NACES. And I'll leave a link below to give you some examples of some of the approved NACES companies. Now, once you find one of these approved NACES companies, you can send your credentials to that company to be evaluated. What they're going to do is they're going to look at the courses you did in your home country and match them up to courses offered here in the United States for teachers. And they want to see if there's some type of equality among these courses. So once they do this report, they will send you a report to say your bachelor's degree from your home country, what 
its equivalency is in the United States. And I've seen some where a bachelor's degree in some home country, when it gets here to the United States, its equivalency is to an associate's degree in education. So that's a very important. They want to see that your bachelor's degree is equivalent to a U.S. bachelor's degree. So I'm going to tie number one and the credential evaluation together and say that's number one and two because that's very vital. Next, very important thing you need to have to teach in the United States is to be proficient in English. They want to know that you are one from a English speaking country or two, if you're not from an English speaking country, your English language is proficient. And how are you going to prove this? You're going to prove this through completing and passing an English proficiency exam. And this can be the TEFL or IELTS or any other accredited English speaking proficiency exams. So definitely being proficient in English is a plus. And sometimes they will try to hear you speak whether through an introductory phone call or while you're interviewing to see what your English is like. So that's number three. Another important requirement is that you have some amount of teaching experience in your home country, preferably two years of teaching experience. And I'm going to talk quickly about the type of visa here, even though we've not gotten to that section as yet. The J-1 program sponsors, they specifically require two years of teaching experience. With the H-1B, you may be allowed to have maybe a year or close to two years of experience, but you need some type of teaching experience. So definitely one requirement to teach in the United States as an international teacher is to have some amount of teaching experience in your home country. And they like to ask about your teaching experience that you did while you were studying, what we call that student teaching. Yes, they want to know that you did that while you were studying. So that's number four. Now, though the United States need teachers, some programs, specifically J-1 programs, they want to know that you are culturally competent. Now, because these programs are cultural exchange programs, they're going to want to know that you are coming to exchange with the students, your culture, and in turn, learn theirs and return to your home country to share what you learned here in the United States. So they want to know that you're open to different um, backgrounds. You don't mind working with diverse children, and you don't mind sharing your experience in the United States. And again, that is going to be on the type of visa that you are coming on. And I'll get more into that in the end. Now, another thing that a lot of people keep asking is about the teaching licensure or the teaching certification, what they call it here in the United States. Same thing, teaching license. A lot of people reach out and say, do I need to have a teaching license in the United States before I'm eligible to teach in the United States? One thing I must say for sure is that every teacher in the United States needs a teaching license or a teaching certification. However, here's the difference with a international teacher. If you are coming to the United States on a J-1 visa, meaning you're coming as an exchange teacher, you will not be required initially to get a teaching license. Your program sponsor will go through the process of ensuring that you obtain an international teaching license. So you see, even though you're coming as an exchange teacher, you're going to be getting an international teaching license to prove that you are eligible to teach in the United States. Your program sponsors, in most cases, assist you with that process. Or if they don't physically assist you, they provide guidance on how you can obtain that international teaching license. While if you're coming on the H-1B visa, you are going to be required to start the process to get your license by yourself with guidance from your HR department, of course. But as an H-1, H-1B visa holder, you're more independent and they're going to leave most of that on you. Again, I'll talk more about J versus H visa here. However, if you need more details about J versus H, I will leave a link in the comments in the description below so you can learn about the different types of visas. 
So what does a teaching license ex entail? If you're on J, as I say, you get an international teaching license. You don't need to do an exam to get the international teaching license because your credentials would have proved or proven that you are eligible to get an international teaching license. If you're coming on an H-1B visa, in most cases, you may get a one-year provisional license without doing any state exams. But after that one-year provisional license, they want to know that you're applying for your initial teaching license, which all um, American teachers are expected to have. And in most cases, you have to do some form of teaching certification exams. In some states, they call it praxis. In some states, they call it gaze. But in most instances, they are the same exams, different names for different states. Another thing you're going to need to teach in the United States are references. So if you're planning to teach in the United States, you're definitely going to need some um whether your principal, your mentor, some superior to provide recommendations for you to say what type of teacher you are. So you want to think about that to know who you're going to ask for your reference to get a teaching job here in the United States. Those are things you can start thinking about right now. Now, a lot of people are scared to apply or start the process to teach in the United States because they know or they hear that it is required to have a driver's license to teach in the United States. In some instances, that, that is true, but it's not true in all circumstances. For example, if you're coming on a J-1 program, most of the J-1 program sponsors require that you have a driver's license. I did say most, not all. So there are some program sponsors, once you're coming to teach with their program, they want to know that you have a driver's license, you've been traveling in your home country for at least two years. Some will not require it. The H-1B pro, the H-1B sponsors, they do not, in most cases, they do not care about if you have a driving li a driver's license, yes or no. So those are some things you need to take into consideration. Depending on the program you're going on, what the requirements are. Now, we keep talking about J and H, and you might be wondering, what are those? So those are different types of visas that are usually offered to international teachers. So if you're an international teacher and you're interested in teaching in the United States, you may be eligible for a J or an H-1B visa. Both visas have their own requirements, and both visas have their pros and cons. If you need more information on these different types of visas, please leave that in the comment section below, below and I can provide more information on it. But for this video, I'm just going to give you a quick synopsis. So the J-1 visa, as I would have mentioned earlier, it's a cultural exchange visa. It allows you to come to the United States for initially three years. And once you're here for the first three years, you may be extended for an additional two years. While the H-1B initially three years, sometimes one, it's going to be dependent on the counselor that you are interviewing with, and it can be extended for up to six years. The J, as I said, is a cultural exchange visa, so it requires that you go home after your tenure. The H-1B visa, it's not a cultural exchange visa. It's a dual intent visa, meaning while on the H-1B, you can start process for permanent residency or what we call green card status. So those are some of the basic um, differences between them. There's a lot more to know about them because if you're coming here with your family, you definitely want to know the ins and outs of the J and the H-1B visa and the H-1B visa. So again, if you want to learn more about that, put it in the comment section below. But as I say that, something I definitely need to address. Guys, I've been sharing so many informative information on this channel, and I'm not getting the motivation that I really need. I'm not feeling motivated. Please, one way to motivate me is to share this video like, and also subscribe. So if you definitely know you need more information, go ahead and give me some motivation. They say encouragement, sweeten labor. So you want me to do all this hard work? All you have to do, simple. Hit that thumbs up um, button, subscribe, and share this video with someone else. I know a lot of us have 
benefited from this platform. Why not share it with others so they can benefit too? So let's get straight to it. One requirement that I left off is vaccination. You're going to need some amount of vaccination to teach in the United States. At one point when COVID was really, you know, in high gear, that was a requirement. I think it's still is, and is a requirement, but that's something we can do some more research on. And there are other vaccines that are required, but your program sponsor or your employer will share those vaccines with you. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, now that I've spoken about the requirements, and I hope I did not leave any off, if I did, definitely be on the lookout because more videos will be coming. What are the steps? If you are planning to come on a J-1 visa, then you need to apply to a J-1 program sponsor. There are a lot of J-1 program sponsors, and I can name a few like faces. That's the one I came on. You have EPI, you have TPG, you have Interlodge, so many program J-1 program sponsors that you can come on. One important detail I'll tell you that you need to do your research before you choose a program sponsor. All these program sponsors have their pros and cons. Like everything in life, there are pros and cons. So if you're interested in a program sponsor, you go and you apply to one of those program sponsors and they'll guide you throughout the process. If you don't want to go on a J-1 visa, then you want to go directly to a school district for an H-1B visa. It's simple. You find the school district you're interested in, you go on their website and you apply. A lot of people keep asking, how do I apply? Now, if you need a step-by-step -step guide on how to apply, leave that in the comment section below and I'll definitely provide you with that information as well. But I always say this, just like in your home country, if you're interested to find a job, you go on the website and you apply for a job. That's what you do if you want a direct hire job here in a school district. And again, you go on their website, you learn about their website, you learn about their mission and their vision, see if they're a good fit for you. And what you can do is put your application in. There will be some things on their application that you may not have, but there are ways of going around those things. Now, I forgot to mention this. I've been teaching in the United States for almost 10 years now, and I know the ins and out of, you know, what to do, what not to do. And so I do provide one-on-one -on -one guidance for people who need it. I provide all this information on YouTube free of cost. But if you need my guidance, if you need my support on one-on-one, -on -one, a one-on-one -on -one session, you can get that through my website, which is supremacyconnect.com. I will leave the link for Supremacy in the description below as well. Through Supremacy, I can provide you with how to apply, where to apply, how to get the requirements that you need, and the steps, just bringing you throughout the steps, helping you along the way. It can be a one-on-one -on -one session, or you can get a subscription, which lasts for up to a year. Check out supremacyconnect.com if you're interested in learning more about how you can get a teaching job here in the United States. And who else to get it from than an experienced teacher working and teaching in the United States? So, as I mentioned earlier, to apply, it's the steps are easy. You first need to decide if you need JRH visa. If you need more videos on, you know, what are the things you need to consider before you choose this? Let, let me know in the comment section below. Whatever it is that you need, put it in the comment section below and I will provide you with, with more videos. But as I said before, go ahead and provide me with the motivation I need to provide you with the information that you need. You see what I'm saying? So put in the comment section what you need. Again, it's very easy to apply. You need to choose if you need J or H, put those applications in and take it from there. Be on the lookout for my next video since I will be sharing some more interesting as well as vital information on how you can get a teaching job in the United States. That's it for now, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.